Wow, that's good. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm Stuart Harodner, the Artistic Director here at the Atlanta Contemporary Arts Center. Welcome. There are some spaces up front for folks who would like to move forward if you can. Realize seating is limited. There are some seats up front, unless those are being saved. There are some adorable children up front, too, so come closer. Um, okay, no, that's fine. So I am not formally welcoming you, but I seem to be the person who can at least get everybody facing in the right direction. So thank you for stopping the revelry for the moment, and we can proceed with our uh, program. I want to introduce Tim Schrager, who is the president of the board of directors of our institution. He's going to formally welcome you, and then we'll be off at the races with the fourth Nexus Award and Lucinda Bunham. I, I told Stuart he was going to have to be the heavy. Get everyone seated. Well, welcome to the Atlanta Contemporary Arts Center and our fourth annual Nexus Award Ceremony. My name is Tim Schrager, and as Stuart mentioned, I am president of the board at this time, and also am chair of a capital campaign that you might know about. But, but first, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Art Papers, Arts ATL, Burnaway, and Hamrick Berg. Thank you so much for your continued support of the contemporary. <laughs> we also need to give a shout out to our huge host committee. Thank you to all of you for participating this year. And to our board, and to our board and the contemporary staff who really deserves the applause for putting all of this together tonight. It's a lot of work. So the Nexus Award was initiated four years ago as a way of recognizing people who really make a difference in the Atlanta arts community and beyond. The award is a way of thanking them publicly and also to possibly prompt others to do more for the arts ecosystem. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint, know what I mean? I See if we have any Monty Python fans in the audience? The contemporary makes the decision of who to honor with input from various individuals. We're open to recognizing the significant efforts of artists, curators, critics, dealers, patrons, collectors, educators, advocates, and other arts leaders. Previous recipients of this award include Andrea Barnwell Brownlee, Jerry Cullum, Louis Corrigan, and Lisa Kremen. <laughs> Two of whom are sitting right in the front row, and I think the others are here as well. Lucinda is an exemplary of this award and all it represents. She is a passionate collector and patron. It's also worth noting that she is a founding member of this institution which has survived for 40 years. Now, there, there, is, there is something to that 40 years that occurred to me, and I hope she won't be upset if I point this out. She's no longer going to be able to tell people she's 39. <laughs> and with that, I would like all of you to know that the Contemporary's current leadership is doing what we can to help make this institution even stronger in its 40th year. We have grown, we have changed over the years, and we will be doing that again this summer with a renovation that will make our facility even better at presenting great art and ideas. I know you'll be thrilled by the changes we have in store, ranging from a lecture hall that will make events like this far easier to accommodate, new bathrooms, eco-friendly HVAC, HVAC systems, and lighting. To pay for this, we're in the midst of a capital campaign. You, you knew I was coming back to that, I'm sure. <laughs> and of course, we would appreciate any and all gifts to this very worthy cause. If you feel so inclined and you want to find a, a staff member, a board member, myself, later tonight, we would love to talk to you. Check our website, call us later. We'd love an opportunity to sit down with you and explain to you what we're doing. We're in crunch time on the campaign right now. When this show behind me comes down in the middle of June, we're going to give the, uh, we're going to give the staff about 24 hours to get the art out of here, and then we're coming in with the contractor to start the renovation. It'll be done by the end of September, 
It has to be done. There's an event here. Someone's getting married here. I don't know who. They're crazy. <laughs> they were crazy to book their wedding here, but it's going to happen. But alas, uh, let's move on with tonight's program. Next up, I'd like to introduce Chris Appleton, the Executive Director of Wonderroot, who will provide comments about our honoree. Wow. Uh, thank you so very much to Stuart, Stacy, and the entire Nexus Award family for inviting me to be a part of this evening. It is an honor to be a small piece of what is a most deserving night of celebration for Lucinda. The Atlanta Contemporary Arts Center and the Nexus Award, evidenced by their leadership and previous recipients, serve as a reminder as to how fortunate all of us are to live in Atlanta and both contribute and benefit from this vibrant arts community. As some of you probably know, I love this city. I was born and raised in Atlanta, left for some soul searching and to grow dreadlocks, <laughs> and returned in 2004 to cut off my dreadlocks and start an organization committed to building a more equitable and just region through the arts. I've been incredibly blessed along the way to work with and learn from many of you in the room, but all of us here know there is no greater force in this town than Lucinda Bunnen. <laughs> to say that Lucinda lives fully would be an understatement. Even still, she travels the world, collects artworks from near and far, is a prolific photographer. In fact, she has a show, including her work, opening at the High Museum in September. She speaks her mind and supports quite literally hundreds of nonprofit organizations as a trailblazing philanthropist. Earlier today, I counted the Lubo Fund's uh, list of recipients, and there were 290 some organizations that it gave to last year alone. <laughs> Lucinda as a trailblazer. I'd like to tell a story about an early morning hike. <laughs> a few years back, at the encouragement of a friend, Angel Poventude, I reached out to Lucinda to see if I might have a few minutes of her time, hoping to earn her support of Wonderroot. When I called, Lucinda said, sure, I'll meet with you. How's an 8 a.m. hike in my backyard? <laughs> as any good executive director would, I said yes and brought my hiking shoes. A couple weeks later, for the first time, I drove up to Lucinda's beautiful mid-century home on Randall Mill, wondering where we would be hiking. After a cup of coffee, Lucinda had this story to share. Several years back, she was walking her dogs at the Chattahoochee Nature Preserve and was given a ticket for having her dogs off the leash. <laughs> a couple of months later, it happened again and then again. After the third occasion, if I recall correctly, Lucinda was fed up. Rather than learning her lesson and putting the dogs on the leash, she did exactly what I would do. <laughs> this is what she said to me, quote, I built my own damn hiking path behind the house. <laughs> we then proceeded to walk for two hours through the, I kid you not, forest of Buckhead, horse pastures, creeks, and beautiful landscape that is Lucinda's backyard. By the end of that morning, Lucinda had agreed to serve on Wonder Roots advisory board and shared with me much of her experience and wis wisdom as to how to navigate the Atlanta arts world. But I want to em emphasize why I feel so fortunate to have forged such a strong bond with Lucinda. Because of her advocacy and commitment to social change, I'm thankful to have her friendship and mentorship. Lucinda is sincere and genuine, and that's why I love her. She is everywhere, every day. She's hiking in the morning, making photographs in the afternoon, and catching three art shows in the evening, all while staying close to her family and taking care of a house full of dogs. <laughs> Lucinda, thank you for making the work that I and so many people in this room are passionate about a possibility with your leadership, love, and support. You are a force of nature.
Once the decision was made to honor Lucinda with the Nexus Awards, our friends at the Atlantic Contemporary Arts Center thought it would be a good idea to check in with some of Lucinda's friends and peers to get their responses to the news. Here's what they had to say. Collections and operations. 
Uh, but I think most importantly for Lucinda, she has the spirit of creativity and youthfulness and energy and optimism. And, um, you know, she's just the kind of person you want to give a great big hug to every day. Here's to you, Lucinda. Congratulations. Congratulations! <laughs> Is we just don't have enough time. So if you keep this in, what I would like to say is number one, listen to Bunnan is the reason I moved from New York to Atlanta. Number two, and not in this order, listen to Bunnan is the reason I know and met my husband. Number three, listen has been a guide, a friend, an inspiration, a joy, and a real, real asset to not only my life personally, professionally, and to this community. Listen to we really love you. Well, how about that? fun part this is the best part of the night certainly Lucinda you are an individual who's made a huge impact on all of us and we are so grateful for it too few examples are held up for rising generations to learn from and we created this award to recognize those individuals who have made a profound contribution to contemporary art in Atlanta and beyond on behalf of the Atlanta Contemporary Art Center I am thrilled to present the Nexus Award to Lucinda Bunnan. everybody this is more than I could have possibly this is more than I could possibly have imagined um, anyway I'm gonna read you my 996th version of my speech <laughs> I I wanted to make it shorter I, I guess I could have even left it out <clears throat> but anyway I'm gonna give it to you Thank you, Chris, for that wonderful introduction. That was special. I'm honored to be receiving the fourth Nexus Award on the fourth anniversary. 40th anniversary. Fourth award on the 40th anniversary. And I'm so happy to be celebrating with all of you. This award is especially important to me since I was there at the very beginning in 1973. As the first photography gallery in Atlanta, Nexus was the perfect organization to showcase new work by emerging men and women of photographers and to recognize the growing importance of photography. I was one of the original 13, some of whom are here tonight. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, the High, Muse High Museum announced yesterday that photography is their fastest growing department. <laughs> That same year, 1973, I rode my beloved horse, Santi, on the anchor leg of the first relay team at the Atlanta Steeplechase, and we won. <laughs> I grew up on a gentleman's farm outside New York City. I milked cows, mucked stalls, and rode beautiful horses with my father, who was from Savannah, Georgia. My brilliant mother was raising three children during the war and wanted to go to medical school but was not accepted because she was married with children. So she shifted gears and got her PhD in organic chemistry at age 48. I graduated from prep school the same year she did, and I was so proud of my mother, I chose to go to her graduation instead of my own. <laughs> it was a lot better. <laughs> In 
In my early years, my parents and Aunt Dot had artist friends like Alfred Stieglitz and Eudora Welty. I remember seeing Stieglitz running around in his flowing black cape with a large format camera on a tripod. I listened to Eudora, Eudora Welty tell her colorful stories and describe her images about the rural South. In 1952, I married Bobby Bunnan while he was studying oral surgery in Boston. After, gradu after he graduated, we moved to Atlanta where he became one of the first oral surgeons. We built our dream house in Buckhead with the assistance of Cecil Alexander, Atlanta's first modernist architect, where we raised our three remarkable children and where I still live. <clears throat> Sadly, Bobby died last year, shortly after his 90th birthday. With Bobby as my partner, we created the Lubo Fund, derived from Lucinda and Bobby. I bet nobody knew that. <laughs> and provided seed money for the fledgling Planned Parenthood and other social and cultural organizations as they came along. In the late 60s, I met Tullio Petrucci, who was making films at Ann Media Studios. He was a true creative genius and inspired me to make a film for my 40th birthday. I somehow talked my entire family of 16 into going to Machu Picchu and the Amazon River where we were pioneers. Upon return, I edited my Peru film and immediately realized that I loved making pictures. I could let people see what I had experienced and it was a truly exciting time for me. <clears throat> I enrolled in a photography class and I discovered an image on my very first roll of film, which has become one of my most enduring and important images. On a family vacation in Pensacola, Florida, I saw nuns walking down the beach in their black habits and saw the stark black and white contrast. I chased them down the beach to get the photo, much to Bobby's dismay, who was chasing me. <clears throat> it became a very empowering moment. <laughs> I met Lee Whitkin of the Whitkin Gallery in New York in 1970, who encouraged me to not only collect photogra photographs myself, but also to encourage the High Museum to begin collecting, as other important traditional museums were doing. Early on, I bought photographs by Edward Weston, Ansel Adams, Frederick Somers, Emmett Gowan, Clarence John Lachlan, and Cindy Sherman, among, among many others. It was the time to be buying. <clears throat> In 1977, I selected a group of advisors to help me create the Bunnen Collection. This was the High's first collection of photographs. I was looking for images that demonstrated directness, honesty, and a personal point of view. This fall, the High Museum is going to exhibit the new and improved Bunnen collection called Subjective Vision for the first time in three decades. <clears throat> <laughs> From the late 70s until today, I've been so fortunate to collaborate with some talented people. My first book was published by Simon & Schuster. It was a collection of not only Georgia crackers, but also Georgians, that's what they called us, <laughs> but also Georgians who were influential in the arts, politics, the environment, and especially those Georgians who moved to Washington for the Carter administration. In 1980, I collaborated with Virginia Warren Smith, a real Southerner, and we traveled America's South and Southwest in a pop-up van for three months with my beloved only Old English sheepdog, Daisy. We were taking pictures of gravestones and cemetery art. Aperture published our book titled Scoring in Heaven, which we saw written and pictured on the headstone of a deceased fellow bowling. In 1981, Virginia and I drove from Atlanta to Alaska to photograph the incredibly massive Alaskan landscape. My third book was published called Alaska, Trails, Tales, and Eccentric Detours. My fourth book, published in 1999, was a retrospective of three decades of my work. I was so delighted that David Lawford's book design won several national awards. Over these last decades, I've been so lucky to travel with family and friends to India, Bosnia, Burkina Faso, Vietnam, the Azmat jungle in Indonesia, Mexico, Cuba, China, Sicily, the Mississippi Delta, and even Tiger, Georgia. <laughs> 
Each place inspires me to continue my journey in photography and to be lucky enough to show my work. One show in particular that meant a lot to me was the collaboration with designers Max Goggin, Meryl Elam, and Tulio Petrucci on the show called The City with an audio-visual five-screen slideshow, always out of sync, <laughs> and a 52-foot collage depicting Atlanta for kids at the High Museum, which was on view for five years. Currently, I have an exhibition at the Hagedorn Foundation Gallery entitled Nudes that will run through May, and in October, the Atlanta Preservation Center will be showing my new movers and shakers. My eight incredible grandchildren, that includes you, Jack, <laughs> and my two, <laughs> and Kendrick, <laughs> and Lindy. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. and my two dingoes, Sacagawea and Zorro, who keep me young. I'm blessed to have my treasured friends, Judy Lampert, Susan Harbage page Richard Egan, John Dean, and many more of you who have given me sage advice and guidance, supporting the arts and creating my own unique vision. Thank you for being here tonight, but more importantly, for supporting the Atlanta Contemporary Arts Center, photography, and the arts. Thank you. Right, so following Lucinda Bunnan, that talk, and all of the preceding comments is a little daunting, but I'm doing the cleanup, uh, which is really just to tell you that we'd love you to stick around for a little while, have another drink, send even more heartfelt congratulations to our honoree, uh, but, but mostly really, as has been said by everyone who preceded me this evening, especially Lucinda, uh, the award recognizes, her life exemplifies, all of your presence here certainly indicates a real commitment to art and ideas, to community, to sort of collective will and making things happen. And so to reiterate uh, Tim Schrager's comments, I would just tell you that this center is a thriving, evolving entity. It cannot grow, it can't be ambitious, it can't connect people and all of the things that we do without your energy and your support. So I would encourage you to be more involved, get involved if you're not currently, continue to spend time here. This is going to be the last time that you will see this facility looking like this. So go to the restrooms, enjoy the transformation <laughs> that will occur this summer. Um, take a look at the two exhibitions on view, if not tonight, in the coming weeks. I think they exemplify the things that Lucinda mentioned, certainly uh, photography by John Pack and, and Gary Hustwit documenting uh, host cities for the Olympics around the world as a quite acclaimed project being shown for the first time in indeed a city that has hosted the games. Uh, and the work of Shara Hughes, an Atlanta-based painter and sculptor having her biggest show in Atlanta. Uh, she's showing her work all over the world. This is, in a sense, a homecoming and also a, a sort of magical launch, making this work visible to all of you. So continue to be involved with the institution. It's such a joy to see many old staff members of this institution, uh, longtime supporters, new friends, former recipients of the Nexus Award. So we just really want to thank you all for being here. Continue to enjoy uh, the rest of the evening. And let's see you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.